following is a TV 59 Sports Action presentation. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to High School Football on Sports Action TV 59, week number nine of the 1991 football season. We're at Shelby High School this week as the Shelby Whippets take on the Truckers of Norwalk High School. Good evening, Ron Rose with you along with Mark Rogers. And tonight marks two teams at the bottom end of the Northern Ohio League. But you could say one of the teams is looking up on a two-game winning streak. There's light at the end of the tunnel for Tom Stacy and his Shelby Whippets, winners of their past two games. And he really believes both offensively and defensively that his system is gelling. It'll be Jerome Kurtz to kick off for the Whippets. And flags come flying all over the place. Stacy, a young football team he has there in his first year with Shelby. But they're coming along with two straight wins, and they have a fine passing offense, especially young quarterback Tony Seibert, number 11, and we'll see a lot of him tonight, and he's been throwing the ball very well in the past couple of games. The officials back it up five, and Kurtz will try again. Right down the middle of the field. Taken at the 15-yard line, up across the 30 to the 35. And taken down at the 44. Low market at the 45. Brian Hovader. Hovader found a crease right up the gut and took it. So Norwalk starts off with good field position. Another struggling football team at 1-7, but good start to this ninth week of the season. And they are very, very young at some of their skilled positions. Enter Trucker down on the field, being attended to. They'll be led by quarterback Reed Shoup, number three. It will be at tailback, Brian Hovader, number 32, Jim Warner, number 44, at fullback. And as you mentioned, Ron, a young offense at the skilled position, young quarterback, just a sophomore, is Shoup. And their go-to guy, Warner, number 44, also just a sophomore. So there's light at the end of the tunnel also for the Norwalk Truckers as they look down the road to finish off on a strong note here in 1991 and look to the future. The starters for the defense of Shelby will be the ends. Andy Thompson and Kevin Howell tackle Josh May and Jason Bailey of the nose guard, Wade Roberts at linebacker, Keith McCormick and Trent Patrick. The corners, Andy Studer and Tony Seibert. The monster back is Chad Friend, while the free safety, Benji Lynch. And the truckers come up, eye formation. As Shoup will give it to the tailback, and he busts across midfield and into Shelby territory. It is Mark Meyer. Meyer finding a big seam right up the middle. And you'll want to notice tonight early on, an unbalanced formation will be the trademark of this Norwalk offense on the right side. First and 10 at the 45. Hand off to Meyer again, and Meyer is hit. But keeps his feet moving to the 40. Initial hit coming from number 20, Trent Patrick, the captain on defense, not listed in the starting lineup. Yes, he is at 
linebacker there. And he, all those taken by the tackle on the left side was able to make the initial contact. Second and five. High formation for the trucker. Shoot at quarterback to give it to the fullback. And Wally Rickey. As we announce two backs and they throw in two different ones. <laughs> Coach Whittington throws us a change up <laughs> to start the ball game. It is Wally Ritchie at fullback and number 22, Mark Meyer at tailback on third and two. And flags come flying in. Truckers get a nice easy game. Five yard penalty against the Whippets. A couple of offensive plays and a penalty. A couple pen of penalties and they find themselves down near the 30 yard line. Dennis Jussie at the top of the screen. Wide receiver that gives it to Meyer and Meyer is gonna be hit. Keeps his feet going. And he'll get down to the 29. Once again, we see a run going off right tackle. And the truckers will continue to run right. They don't like to throw the ball too much. They'll put it up when they have to, but like to establish the ground game on the right side. Second down and seven as the coaching staff of Shelby looks on. The pitch to Meyer. And Meyer slips a couple tackles, and it's close to first down yardage. Keith McCormick, the linebacker, number 90 for Shelby, upset with himself a bit. He missed a tackle that would have brought down the running back right about the line of scrimmage. Came up empty. Norwalk likes to run right so much, they even at times go with four down linemen, rather three down linemen, and a tight end on the right side, just two on the left side from center. High formation to give is to Meyer the tailback, and Meyer will have the first down as he gets down to the 20-yard line. Mark Meyer, a 5'8", 164-pound senior. First and 10, 8.40 remaining opening period. This is the first drive of the ball game. Meyer, the ball carrier, he's going to be stopped in the backfield. Take number 75, Josh Ney on the stop. Josh Ney, one of the fine linemen in the NOL and about three teammates as the Shelby Whippets really with a huge surge on the defensive front. To stop the ball carrier on the left side as he tried to go off tackle and had nothing. Second and 14. Meyer will be in motion to give it to the fullback. Fumble on a play and is recovered by a Norwalk lineman as they unpile. Big number 77, John Edwards recovers the fumble. Good gain on the fumble there, Ron. That ball fumbled into no man's land, and a Norwalk lineman aggressively went after the football and uh, down near the 15-yard line now. The fumble picks up nine. Third and five. Norwalk again with the eye of backfield. And it looks like the right guard from Norwalk. A um, little reflex action. No. Little procedure. Like Brian Magyar, the right guard. Third and ten. Mike Woodstra to the near side. Dusty the far side. Shoot, fires, it's overshot. Overshoots intended receiver, Greg Hip, the tight end. A 
There you see Tony Seibert is the quarterback and cornerback. And one of the top players for the truckers on both units. And Norwalk will try the, ex the field goal. The field goal will be set. It will be in excess of 35 yards, but Norwalk will call a timeout. A 37-yard field goal. Good crowd on hand tonight in Shelby, as it is parent night. Couple that along with a very tradition-rich football town, and uh, no matter what the record, Ron, these fans will be out to support this football program. Out of the hold of Brad Malson. There's Brad Dayokman will kick a field goal from about 37 yards. Straight on kicker. Snap is good, kick's down, kick is up, and it's gonna be short. So the truckers miss from 37 yards. Not quite enough leg into that one. Just got under it, just a bit. Kind of like my golf shot <laughs> once in a while, but he was right on line. First and 10 at the 20. Seibert, the quarterback. The pitch, it will be a reverse. A double reverse. And here they come, down to the open field. Seibert's out in front on a block. And he's racing down the sidelines, and he could be gone. Ten, five, touchdown, whip it. Bring out the gadget plays as Chuck Bauman races 80 yards. We were talking before the game how Tom Stacy likes to open it up, likes to do some different things. It's not the traditional off tackle on the first play of the game, and look, look what he does. Double reverse play, and it's no problem. Hey. And a nice block out in front by Tony Seibert, who blocked the corner man, Ty Wade, down the sideline. And just like that, the whippets are on the scoreboard. Search in for the point after it is up, and it's going to be a wide right. But the Whippets get on the board on an 80-yard touchdown scamper off a double reverse. Just like he brought up in the, slant, the, the old sand lot out at the playground. Great. I thought for sure that was an off-tackle play to the right to open the ball game like we usually see. <laughs> then, then the reverse. No, double reverse. And uh, obviously caught the truckers off guard also. As Chuck Bauman, the senior, races 80 yards with 6.44 remaining in the first period. more pe peculiar to see the double reverse because you usually throw in the reverse. And there he is, a very there tired young man. <laughs> <laughs> the kickoff by Kurtz taken at the 22. And up across the 31-yard line. 
just mentioning, Ron, strange you throw the reverse at this team usually to get the flow of the defense one way and come back the other way. But with a double reverse, it's kind of strange to see because you're, you end up running the play in the same direction that the defense originally anticipated the play to go and to see it work. First and 10 for the truckers. Meyer goes in motion and flags come flying in. Procedure penalty against Norwalk. Now what do you say Norwalk comes back with the flea flicker? <laughs> I don't know. I think they're more conventional. There's the mascot, the whippet. Maybe um, the mascot's the one calling the plays. I don't, I don't think so. <laughs> First and 15, Meyer again in motion to give to the fullback, and he's going to be taken down by Trent Patrick. Everything moving right. Big hole opens up on the left side, then all of a sudden closed nicely by the linebacker. Jim Warner, the fullback, the ball carrier. Second down and 14. Mark Meyer again in motion. Play action. Shoot. Fires. Ball tipped at the line of scrimmage. The defensive end there, number 63, Andy Thompson, able to get a hand up. That's what those defensive line coaches will tell you if you can't get the penetration to get to the quarterback. Stay back, get the hands up, try and anticipate the throw. Third and 13. And three backs in the backfield. They give us to Warner, and Warner's going to be hit at the line and scoots forward for a couple. Wade Roberts on the stop. Fourth and 11, and the truckers will punt it away. Harris Luna on the punt. Low line drive over the head of the return men, and they will let it roll. And down at the 16. So the Whippets will start up their offense and see if Coach Tom Stacy goes to a simple offense. Just never know. First and ten. The handoff around the end. Fumble on the play, but the ball goes out of bounds. Jerome Kurtz, the ball carrier. Brandon balled up. 35 coming from his monster position to make a big hit right around the ankle up in the ball carrier and cause a turnover. Fortunately for Shelby, out of bounds. It's Kurtz and Josh Hoffman. Seibert on the roll, fires in and out of the hands of intended receiver. That is Kyle Spangler. Spangler with a nice job in adjusting to the football. He got turned around, a ball thrown behind him, but just couldn't hang on. Third and six. Andy Studer and Ken Williams wide. Seibert throws, ball caught. As the big tight end, Matt Mott. 
catches it, but he will be well short of a first down. Once again, Balda, the monster man. Nice one-on-one -on -one tackle there in the flat. Matt Ramey to punt for Shelby. It's a fake. Cyber throws out. The ball is caught. Benji Lynch, one of the captains on the squad, picks up the first down. Coach Tom Stacy once again opening up the bag of tricks. See if this drive will continue. First and ten. I believe that pass will put Seibert over the 1,000 yards on the season passing. To give to Hoffman. Hoffman across the 40 and taken down at the 46. When you're able to convert a big play like they had just done, Shelby gives the, big, the team a big lift. Norwalk's going to have to regroup and halt this drive. First and 10. Cyber rolls, fires behind intended receiver Jerome Kurtz. Two times now, Cyber rolling left off the fake option. Dive play on the left side, rolls left and uh, behind the intended receiver. But as you mentioned, Ron, over, over 1,000 yards now. And as far as we know, that's the first time in Shelby football history a quarterback thrown for more than 1,000 yards in one season. The handoff to Kurt. Kurt will get out to midfield. For so many years, it's been a Shelby Whippets running attack and their big offensive lineman. Now Coach Stacy coming in, and he's he's been at some, you say, pretty decent schools in the past. <laughs> Maslin? You ever heard of Maslin? Oh, I think around? they kind of uh, stick out in your mind quite a bit. Maslin, also Lancaster, and it was also part of the Galleon Tiger 1986 state championship team. The give to Josh Hoffman. Hoffman into the open field across the 40. 30, and will be run out of bounds at the 22. I tell you, Hoffman did some fancy running there in the open field, made a few guys miss after he broke the line of scrimmage obviously initially some fine blocking up front but once into the secondary Hoffman really turned on the uh, moves and Shelby's on the move once again 235 remaining in the first period Williams and Suter split wide gives to Hoffman another big hole Hoffman down to the 10 yard line They'll mark it at the 11, but another first down. First and 10 for the Whippets at the 11. Cybert gives it to Kurt. Kurt hurdles, and he's going to be in the end zone for a touchdown, but a flag has been thrown at the line of scrimmage. So, we hold everything. Indication, illegal procedure against Shelby. Fine run by Kurtz negated there. Norwalk has to be concerned with the tackling that they've shown in the linebacking core in the secondary, especially Shelby running a very diverse, well-executed offense to this stage in the game. But as we note, the truckers need to uh, make some better hits and some better arm tackling, some rather not arm tackling, but wrapping up. First and 15. Williams and Suter will come to the near side. Seibert will roll that way. Fire. Suter's got it. 
inside the 10 and taken out of bounds at the 7. Very early in the ball game, but Shelby already spreading the wealth on offense to various backs and wideouts. Second and six with two minutes remaining. It was to Kurt. Kurt will be pulled down. Nice play by number 77, Sean Edwards. If not, Kurt waltzes in for six. Yeah, touchdown saving tackle. There by big number 77. Third down and six for Shelby. Ken Williams and Andy Tudor to the near side. Kurtz in the slot. Seibert rolls. Kurtz is there. He's got it, but falls down at the one. Fourth. Oh, it'll be close to a first down. I have a correction. They got inside the one for the first down. So in terms of what Coach Stacy's gonna do, your guess is as good as mine. <laughs> Very beautiful night here in Shelby. Looked like rain was coming, but it has held off so held off so far. Indication. First down. Shelby, fine offensive showing. Still a minute left in the first quarter. 162 yards, of course. Helped by the big play on the first play from scrimmage for them. Norwalk with 38. First and goal to one. Hoffman will not get in. To second and goal from the one. Kurtz and Hoffman in the backfield with Tudor and Williams wide to the left. Give to Kurt. Kurtz is in for six. <laughs> Norwalk with a de decent defensive stand down there near the goal line, but it's just tough when you've got a fine offensive line and many weapons shown by the Shelby Whippets here in the first quarter to keep a team that's that diverse out of the end zone from one yard out. And Coach Stacy will go for two. He leads 12 to nothing. Spangler and Studer to the near side. Play action. Cyber throws to the corner and drops. Intended for Matt Mott, the tight end. So the score with 23 seconds remaining in the opening period. Shelby 12, Norwalk nothing. TV 59's Watch and Win Contest coming at you. Keep watching TV 59 during this Shelby Norwalk football game for your chance to win three large bags of Jones potato chips. It's easy to watch and win when you see the TV 59 telephone appear on your TV screen. Call 526-5825 in Mansfield or 289-2605 in Ashland. If you are caller number five, you will win three large bags of Jones potato chips. Remember, if you have been a winner on TV 59 in the past 90 days, you are not eligible to win again today. The Whippet strike quick. 12 points in the opening quarter. And they're 62 to 6 romp over Upper Sandusky. They had 14 in the first quarter, but 28 in the second quarter. 
The kickoff taken by Meyer. Marco gets across the 30 and taken down at the 36. We had heard, Ron, that Coach Stacy likes to open it up, likes to do some different things, but I'm really impressed with the diversity of their offense, the different things they like to do. Throw on the roll, do some different things, of course, the reverse, and uh, even on their straight go plays, off tackle, left and right, the offensive line has done a fabulous job. And that will end the first quarter of play from Shelby. Your score to Shelby Whippets, 12. The Norwalk Truckers, 0. We'll be back with second quarter action right after this. We're back at Shelby High School. Ron Rose with you along with Mark Rogers. So we start the second quarter of play. The truckers with the football and the give is to the tailback and that goes just about nowhere. Norwalk with an unusual call there, not throwing the football, then they pull the draw on the Shelby defense and didn't fool anyone. Second and 12. Shoot, throws out in the flat and overshoots. Intended receiver. Dennis Jussie. Have to be careful throwing those out passes with that much of a arc on the football or they get run back the other way. Personal foul penalty called against Shelby. And Coach Stacy and also defensive coach Gary Dvorak want to know what's going on. Coach Stacy has pulled out number 75, Josh Nay. So Norwalk picks up 15 yards with the help of the Whippets. First and 10 at midfield. And Meyer will pick up about one yard. There you see Coach Dvorak talking to Josh Nay. Probably explaining in simple terms. Second and eight. To give to Meyer. Meyer will get to the outside. Flag thrown. Nice open field tackle on the play. Brett Schiffer on the stop. Penalty would go against Norwalk. Norwalk not only unable to get anything going offensively, they've really hurt themselves with penalties. Now they hit the ball inside the 50-yard line there of the Whippets and now find themselves backed up. Second and 19. The Whippets dig in. Hand out to the fullback, and Warner will pick up about six. And a reminder to stay tuned at halftime. Not only will we have the Shelby High School Marching Band, but Matt Appleby has highlights from the Madison-Mansfield Senior Clash over at Arlen Field. 
Third and 15, screen set up, ball is caught. But the receiver, Brian Hovater, uh, took the big skid. Took the skid, unfortunately, for Norwalk because they had set that play up rather well, letting the lineman come in on the quarterback. Cube able to deliver the ball in the flat with some uh, little convoy in front of the running back, but unable to convert. Luna to punt. High punt. Again, goes over the receiver's head. And it will die at the one-yard line. Some of these punt returners may have to reassess where they <laughs> position themselves for these punts. A couple of line drives on both sides of the football have gone over punt returners' heads, and this one could be costly for Shelby. Norwalk in good field position defensively to try and get a stop and set up their offense, trailing 12-0. The return men, Andy Studer and Josh Hoffman. First and 99. Well, just first and 10. Williams and Studer to the near side. The handoff to Hoffman. Hoffman will get out across the 10-yard line into the open field. 30 at the 35. And he'll step out of bounds at the 42. The left side of the Shelby line really opens something up against the truckers there. And Hoffman takes advantage, the tailback, scooting through there. He knows what to do when he sees a lane like that. He's certainly shown that tonight. And there goes the Norwalk field position defensively. 41 yards on the scamper. Hoffman comes out limping. First and 10 for the Whippet. Seibert, quick out. The ball is tipped. Second down and 10, 8.29 remaining in the second period. 12 to nothing, Shelby on top. The handoff to Henkel. Henkel gets out to midfield as he uh, carries some defenders with him. Aaron Henkel, only a sophomore. Did a nice job of finding the hole right off, right tackle. Tough to bring down, apparently. Flags come flying in. I believe somebody lined up off sides for Shelby. There's Josh Hoffman. It's reminding you to stay tuned to halftime. We have highlights of Madison and Mansfield Seniors. And again, plenty of action here at Shelby. 12 to nothing. Shelby on top. Third down. Seibert rolls, fires. Ball's caught by Kurt. But he's going to be short of a first down. Ridden down there by Brian Perkins, number 45 from behind. Holding be called against Shelby. Do you take the penalty mark and move him back, or with the first with the catch, it'll make it fourth and three. With the way Shelby's moved the ball, both running and passing, move him back. That's exactly what the truckers will do. You're just trying to put me on the spot, Ryan. That's right. <laughs> Third and 21. Cyber rolls, fires. 
to Williams. It looked like the old hook and lateral play, but short hopped. Short hopped it to Kenny Williams as Josh Hoffman was coming around. This is fun to see. Open it up and uh, see what happens. The play that Coach Don Shula made famous. 1981 <laughs> playoff game, I remember, against the San Diego Chargers. One of the great playoff games in NFL history. Matt Ramey to punt. He will take off on this one. He's going to be taken down. Trailing 12 nothing. Norwalk needed a break, and they got one right here. Now let's see what they can do with it on offense. They've done little thus far. As the ball boys, I think, need a drink of water. At least they may think they need a drink of water. <laughs> First and 10 for Norwalk at the Shelby 24. The give is to Meyer, and Mark will get inside the 20 to the 19. Didn't look like much there, but Meyer churned out about four yards. Coach Stacy talking over to his offense. As we have Brad Molson in at quarterback for the Truckers. A 5'10 senior. The give is to Meyer. Meyer in the open field. Fumble on the play. Still on the loose, and the Whippets will have it. Somebody got in there and put their helmet on the football because Meyer had a big gainer, and then all of a sudden somebody lowered the boom on him. Didn't catch the number, but that ball was definitely coming out. Shelby comes up with another big play, this time on defense. First and ten from the two. Seibert will give it to Hoffman, and Josh will get out to the six. Jerry, take a look at the Norwalk side. Team disguised as empty seats tonight. Second down and six. To give to Kurtz, and Kurtz will get out to the seven, possibly the eight-yard line. With a 12-nothing lead in this field position, Coach Stacy can afford to uh, play a kind of conservative, especially with the defensive showing his club shown thus far in the first half. Even if you are forced to punt the football, Norwalk has not shown the ability to move it on offense. Third and four, Cybert, play action. Screen to Hoffman, he's got blockers out in front. Nice sidestep, Hoffman will be taken out of bounds at the 19. Another well-designed play by the Shelby offense. They move everything right. Cybert looks that way most of the way, getting the secondary to roll that way. Turns it over to the left side, and uh, nice game there by Josh Hoffman. Hoffman, only a junior. First and ten for the Whippets. Hoffman, a single setback. They give it to him with a blocker out in front. And Josh picks up about six. Shelby showing once again that they like to run a lot of misdirection stuff. Show it one way, come back with the counter. Tudor and Williams to the far side. 
handoff to Josh Hoffman. Hoffman across the 30. He has the first down and taken down at the 35. Let's take a minute to mention that Shelby offensive line opening up these running lanes for specifically Josh Hoffman. Tito Workman at strong tackle. Sam Leibarger, strong guard, number 76. Tyler Stepsis, 54. Steve Clark, this quick uh, guard and quick tackle. Andy Dawson. Hoffman will get around the end, across the 40, and ridden out of bounds at the 45. And he's going to be close to another first down. You begin to wonder if Norwalk's not only able, not able physically to stop the run, but with the diverse offense shown in the first quarter, if they're a bit on their heels, wait, wondering what's going to happen next. Duder and Williams at the top of the screen. Play action. Seibert throws deep. And overshoots intended receiver Andy Studer. Andy Studer, not a bad guy to go to, Ron. First in the conference, the Northern Ohio League in receptions. And not a bad duo there, Kenny Williams, third in the conference, also playing for the Shelby Whippets. Second and 10, 3, 22 remaining. Before halftime, 12 to nothing. Shelby with the lead. Hoffman with the blocker out in front. He gets across midfield. Just staying right behind the block of number 62, Andy Dawson. Late flag is Dawson. Dawson and Ty Wade struggling. what's going on as Stacy pulls Dawson out immediately. Official coming over to talk to Tom Stacy and his staff. And Coach Whittington getting the explanation. These guys may be tossed. Dead ball foul and sportsmanlike. Against Shelby. Double unsportsmanlike, and it will be Andy Dawson, number 62, as Shelby gone for the game. And for Norwalk, number 24, Ty Wade, the safety, gone. Both have been ejected. And two very key players for each team tonight. Andy Dawson, the quick tackle for Shelby, one of the fine offensive linemen in the league. And on the other side of the ball, Ty Wade anchoring at the safety position, a very fine secondary for Norwalk. So both will be sorely missed. Third and eight. Play action. Seibert throws. Ball's caught by Suter. Nice catch. Ten, five, touchdown whip it. What a grab by Andy Studer. Fantastic play there by Studer, the leading receiver in the league. He made a fantastic adjustment to the ball. It looked like the corner had broken in front to make a, a desperate attempt to deflect or pick off the pass. And despite the distraction, Studer hung with it, made the reception, and kept his feet and went all the way. Flag thrown. Personal foul against Shelby. I believe he meant to say Norwalk, because the penalty is declined. Norwalk. 
on third and eight. Seibert, the suitor, equals six. Whippets go for two. They give to Hoffman. Hoffman's going to waltz in for the two-point conversion. Untouched. They don't come much easier than that for Josh Hoffman. Just like in drills. 2.38 remaining in the second period. Shelby, 20. Norwalk, nothing. Coach Stacy huddles all of his troops. He's given Coach Stacy credit for the game plan he's been able to put together, but you also have to have the players to execute it. Cyber has shown an ability to put the ball on the money when he's had to, and the offensive line has done a fantastic job coming off the football and many weapons in the backfield, especially Josh Hoffman. Cyber last week. 11 of 13 for 127 yards and a touchdown two weeks ago. Just as effective, 13 of 17 for 99 yards and two touchdowns. So you're looking at a fantastic completion percentage the last two weeks, and I believe that brings him up to about 52%. So he has really improved in the last two weeks throwing the football, and now two and a half weeks. Kurtz kicks off, deep kick, taken at the three. Hovader will get up to the 24-yard line. The truckers need to get something going here with 2.28 left in the first half to get back in the football game. Reminder coming up at halftime, the Shelby High School Band and also Madison Rams and Mansfield Senior High, Senior High Tigers highlights with Matt Appleby. Meyer gets to the outside, but he's going to be run down. Trent Patrick. Fine pursuit there by Patrick and the rest of the Shelby defense to ride the running back. Meyer out of bounds on the left side. Second down and nine. Clock down to 145 in the second period. Norwalk surprisingly taking their time, Ron, trailing 20 to nothing. Play action, fires, and way over top intended receiver. Late flag comes flying in. Tender receiver was Greg Hip. Pass interference against the Whippets. Really a mistake there that didn't need to be made. Three guys around the intended receiver and also the ball well overthrown. First and 10 for Norwalk, 124 remaining in the first half. As Dennis Justy comes to the near side, handoff to the fullback. Warner picks up maybe three. You mentioned Dennis Justy. He may be a guy that the Norwalk truckers would like to get involved more in the offense in the second half, trailing by 20 points. He's a big play guy and he can make some things happen. He is wide to the right on second and eight. Clock under a minute. Molson throws. Receiver slips and falls. Mike Woodstra. Nice 
ninth week of the football season. Can you believe this weather? About 75 degrees today and uh, really a perfect night for football. Just kind of makes things pretty weird. Don't have the big parkas on at this time usually. Molson throws. Ball intercepted. That is Chad Friend. And he's into Norwalk territory at the 45. Chad Friend, the monster back. Playing deep in that middle zone. The ball intended to go over his head and between he and the deep back, but he made a fine leaping catch. Good hands shown there by Chad Friend. Clock running, 35 seconds. Seibert. Play action. Throws. Ball is incomplete. And no flag. Well, you be the judge. We may have had a handful of jersey there by a Norwalk defensive back, but it was close. Whether it was after the ball was over the receiver, but possibly if it before some states you get five to ten for doing that. <laughs> but anyhow, second and ten. Cybert will roll. Fires. Ball's caught by Studer. First down. Shelby once more, Ron. I'm kind of surprised they come out with two passes, not trying to run out the clock, but taking advantage of the time and field position they do have to put some more points on the board. They're going to call that incomplete to Studer. 23 seconds remaining, third and 10. Williams to the far side, Studer at the bottom of the screen. Cybert. Throws, slant in, but throws it behind Ken Williams. Fourth and ten. Kick. 20-point lead. You have to kick. If they're not, you kick the football. And that's exactly what Coach Stacy's going to do as Matt Ramey will come in. But Tony Seibert's lined up in a formation. Has to keep an eye on old Tony, number 11. Ramey punts it away and goes out of bounds at about the 22. I was upset that Dave Russell did not fair catch that one. He was heading in his direction. Get a shot down there, Ron. I don't understand. <laughs> He's wearing blue, so the Shelby players might take him for <laughs> a Norwalk player. Not a pretty sight. That could, that could get ugly. <laughs> 17 seconds remaining in the second period. Norwalk with the football. Brad Molson in a quarterback. Play action. Under some pressure, Molson will tuck it and run. And taken down by Trent Patrick. And a late flag comes in. That was going to go on Heath McCormick. A late hit. Assess. Against Shelby. Last play of the second period. Ball will sail out of bounds. And that will end the first half of play from Shelby. Your score at halftime is Shelby 20. Norwalk nothing. Before we have the Shelby High School marching band, we'll take a timeout when we come back. It will be Matt Appleby up next with highlights from Arlen Field, the Madison Rams, and the Mansfield Senior High Tigers. So you don't want to miss it. Stay tuned. As 
we start the third quarter of play from Shelby. The truckers will kick off. Low line driver taken by one of the up men across the 40 to the 46. Adam Howard, one of the up men. The Whippets will start on offense to start the third quarter and try and pick up where they left off offensively. We'll pass along some numbers right after this play. Williams to the far side. Tudor at the bottom of the screen. Seibert looking for Williams. Throws. He's got it. Complete at the 45. With that completion, Seibert should break the 100-yard mark. First half passing for Seibert, 93 yards with a big number, 215 yards by that Shelby run offense. Of course, not hurt too much by that first play, the double re the uh, double reverse. Second and one, handoff to Hoffman. Josh has the first down, brought down at the 43. Shelby totaling 308 yards in the first half. On pace for a 600-yard ball game. Something else, 10 first downs. So they really chalked up a lot of yards per play. Norwalk, 62 yards on the ground, not bad, but two through the air. Just a total of 64 yards for Norwalk in the offense. Five first downs, and four of those came by penalty. First and 10, Williams and Suter top of the screen. To give this to Jerome Kurt. Kurt. Bowls his way into the open field, 20, 15, 10, 5, and he's going to be pulled down at the one-foot line. You don't get much closer than that. Jerome Kurt tight stepping it through the secondary, and it looked like he was gone, caught up by a secondary man there for the truckers of Norwalk. Shelby very much knocking on the door once again. And we've seen just about everything as the Whippet has found a newfound friend there. Hello. <laughs> First and goal at the one foot. Hoffman, is he in? Yes. Six points for the Whippet. Jason Hoffman didn't get much there, but he didn't need much. Uh, pushed his way into the end zone for another score for the Whippets of Shelby. Still 10 minutes, 14 seconds remaining in the third. 26 to nothing. And Shelby will go for two. Tudor and Williams, the wideouts. Hoffman and Kurt. Kurt gets the carry, and he bowls his way for two points. Guys, the extra point is good. Shelby, 28, no loss, zero. Mentioning earlier, Mark, we've seen just about everything. Yes, we have. The first play from scrimmage, the double reverse. And then also trying the hook and ladder. It didn't quite work. Looked like it was forming well. The pass kind of one hop the wide receiver, or we may have seen some more. Big yardage turned up by that whip it offense. The also, crowd really getting into it. Also a fake punt. Tony Seibert throwing for a first down. And then on the other hand, besides the razzle-dazzle, they've been able to pound the ball also behind the big offensive line, and specifically Jason Hoffman out of the backfield. All this offense shown by the Scarlet and Gray tonight. We can only <laughs> hope the Scarlet and Gray can get it done tomorrow against Michigan State. One of the captains there on the Whippet team, Benji Lynch, number 86. As Jerome Kurtz will kick off. And take in at the 14. It is Jussie, and Jussie breaks out in the open field and brought down by Kurtz at the 44. 
Dennis Jussie, we mentioned in the first half, Ron, a guy that Norwalk would like to see have the football a little bit more than he was able to get his hands on it there in the first half. And you can see why with that kickoff return. First and 10 for the truckers. Shoot back in a quarterback. Throws, ball's caught by Warner. And Jim Warner will be taken down for a pickup of about five. Minimal gain, but Shoop with a nice job of the play action on the right side, then rolls left and able to throw the football on target. Tough position to find yourself throwing in as a quarterback, rolling left, throwing downfield, but he was able to get the completion to Warner. Second and five. The full house backfield to give to Meyer. The TV 59 Watch and Win Contest back at you this week. Keep watching TV 59 during this game for your chance to win three large bags of Jones potato chips. It's easy. Watch and win. When you see the TV 59 telephone appear on your TV screen, call 526-5825 in Mansfield or 289-2605 in Ashland. Caller number five wins three large bags of Jones potato chips. Remember, if you have been a winner on TV 59 in the past 90 days, you are ineligible. Third and three. Shoot, will give it to Warner. And Slam down. He is met nicely by big number 75, Josh Nay. Josh Nay, as we heard from Coach Stacy, having an outstanding season here in 1991. Only a sophomore. A very big guy. Fourth down. And three. The punt. Another booming punt. This time Hoffman is back far enough. He takes it at the eight. And a run down at the 21. As Dennis Jesse gets up limping. One of the few times Hoffman hasn't been able totally to take advantage of the open field. The coverage of Norwalk doing a fine job there. Pin Shelby back inside the 25-yard line. Tony Seibert in at quarterback still to give to Josh Hoffman with a blocker out in front. And Josh gets to the 27. Quick guard number 61, Steve Clark doing a fantastic job on the right side. He actually took two Norwalk defenders out on that play. The Woodbits have, haven't missed a beat after Andy Dawson was ejected earlier in the ball game. He's replaced by Brad Thompson. The give is to Hoffman, and Hoffman gets to the 30. Third, and call it one and a half. But 6.30 remaining in the third quarter. Shelby on top, 28 to nothing. To give us to Kurt, fumble on the play, and the ball is going to be recovered by Norwalk. Doug Bores with the fumble recovery. Something finally going right for Norwalk, and I believe. This is the deepest penetration they've had on offense tonight. Since the first series on the missed 37-yard field goal, that's the closest they've come to the score. They give to Meyer, and Meyer is held up, gets away until the whippet hit him. 
Kevin Howell, 74, and Josh Nay, once again, number 75 for the Whippets, making the play, initially forcing the other Shelby defenders to catch up to Meyer. Meyer doing a fine job of just getting anything out of that. Wade Roberts, number 57, limps off the field for Shelby. Second and 10. The give is to Meyer, and Meyer's going to be pulled down from behind by Kevin Howell again. Wade Roberts walking off the injured ankle. Third and eight. Shoot, play action, throws, ball is, is it picked off? Yes. Matt Albert, number 14. Anticipated well and able to get the interception, the turnover back over to Shelby. Norwalk given good field position by the Shelby turnover. They can't do anything with it. I thought for a minute that ball hit the ground, but good hands there by number 14. First and 10 for Shelby. Hoffman in motion. No backs in the backfield now. Seibert throws it to Hoffman. That could be a lateral. And it was. Might have been a double pass. Who Looks knows? Like that's what they were setting up on that one. I wouldn't put it past <laughs> Coach Stacy to go with another trick play here. That backwards lateral is a live ball. And it moves the whippets all the way back to the 16. We call it second and 22. Play action, Seibert, screen to this side. Hoffman has it with blockers. Josh cups it back up and is tackled at the 28. Late flag comes flying in. Holding against the Whippets. Despite the holding call there, Hoffman, not just with the physical ability, but showing good vision downfield in his running. Ran very well off of a few blocks, choosing the right way to go. And then coming off with a nice gain before the holding call. Ball at the nine. Second down from here to probably about Mansfield. Thirty yards. First down marker sits just inside the forty. Does Shelby have a play for this situation? We'll see. Cybert, quick out. The hook and lateral. Hoffman has it, but Hoffman steps out of bounds. Not too much of real estate on that end. No, there wasn't. Hoffman trapped against the sideline on that play and give Norwalk credit on defense. He anticipated well. This will bring up third and 22. Spangler wide to the left. Seibert will roll that way. Tony throws. Ball is caught by Studer. Studer's out in the open field to the 40, and pushed out of bounds. They'll mark him at the 26. Studer running the tightrope there at the end, almost able to keep his balance and make it all the way in for the touchdown. Pushed out of bounds by a Norwalk defensive back, saving another touchdown. Shelby shows they can convert even on third and 22. So on third and 22, 
22. The Whippets pick up about 45 yards. First and 10. Seibert gives it to Hoffman. Josh Hoffman busts his way to the 25. Shelby doing their best to equal or surpass that 308 yard total in the first half. Second down and five. Two minutes and 30 seconds. Remaining in the third period, 28 to nothing in favor of Shelby. Kurtz busts to the outside. He, can he turn the corner? He's pulled down at the 10 yard line by Brad Malson. And despite the six losses to start the season, this is nothing new for Shelby. 62-6 over Upper Sandusky last week. Tiffin College, they dropped over them 42-22 two weeks ago. And you can certainly see how this offense has gelled in the latter part of the season. First and goal, Seibert to the corner for Studer. He's got it, touchdown with it. Fantastic catch there by Studer. Kind of like that fade pattern from Michigan. It was beautiful. Don't mention Michigan. <laughs> Sorry about <all> right. that. <laughs> no, yeah, it reminds you of Desmond Howard, exactly. Fantastic adjustment to the football. Thrown well also, though, by Seibert. Ball in the air with number 24 running away from the football. And that takes a lot of concentration to look up, and the ball's right there. Jerome Kurtz for the point after. Seibert will hold. Kick is up, and it is good. One minute, 48 seconds remaining in the third period. It is Shelby, 35. And Norwalk, nothing. The Andy Studer series that time for Shelby came up with a big third and 22 catch going for 45 yards along the sideline. Almost took it all the way on that play. Then he comes back, caps the scoring with a fantastic adjustment on the fade pattern and coming up with a sliding catch in the back of the end zone. And we can see why he's the number one receiver in the North Ohio League. I think the Shelby Whippets team has, um, has opened some eyes for next year. Has I believe maybe they're whipping into shape. I'm not going to touch that one. <laughs> as, <laughs> as Seibert, only a junior. Hoffman, a junior. Andy Studer is a junior. Jerome Kurtz, a junior. Good talent, some big offensive linemen. A tough defense, as we have seen tonight. Kurtz, straight down the middle of the field, taken at the 15, and through the wedge goes Brian Hobader. One minute and 30 seconds remaining in the third period. And there you see the backup quarterback, Steve Shag, warming up the arm. Hand off to Mark Meyer. Meyer is hit at the 44. Trent Patrick on the stick. When you have a 35-point performance on offense, you tend to overlook what the defense has been able to do, but they've totally shut down the Norwalk offense tonight. There you see Steve Shag, the backup quarterback. So 
flags come flying in. An official's timeout. Equipment difficulty taken care of. And of course, we know what that's all about when we're trying to set up for a football game. Clock down to 30 seconds, third period. Fumble, and Shoop will fall on it. Third and six. This will be the last, probably the last play of the third period. High backfield for the truckers. Shoot. Step. Throws. Downfield. And is it caught? Reception made by number one. Andrew. I'm going to call him Olanian. Andrew made a fantastic catch <laughs> there, Ron. I can't believe he kept his feet in bounds. Uh, ball thrown up there. He was able to concentrate on the football. It make the over-the-shoulder catch and keep the feet in bounds. So a fine play there by number one, the senior, 5'10", 145. That ends the third period. Your score. Shelby, 35, Norwalk, nothing. We'll be back with the fourth and final period right after this. We are back, first and 10. And Josh Ney throws Mark Meyer for a big loss. Kind of tough to shed a block any quicker than Josh Ney did right there and get to the ball carrier in the backfield. Second and 14. Shoot. Looking for a receiver. Throws. Incomplete. Almost picked off. Back there, number 93, Eric Licht. Norwalk threw three quarters offensively with 97 yards, 33 of those coming in the third period. Eight rushing, just eight rushing for a team that relies so heavily on the ground game. 25 passing. And they have rushed for 70 yards in the ball game, entering the fourth quarter. 27 through the air. Third and 14, shoot, under pressure, a reverse fumble, and the ball is picked up by Wade Roberts. <laughs> Norwalk trying to get something going with a little bit of razzle-dazzle on their own part. But if you don't block up front, you can design all the trickery you want, and it's just not going to happen. And the Whippets keep piling up the yardage and the points. Steve Shag, a junior, six foot three, and a quarterback. He gives it to Hankel. Hankel into the open field. And he gets down, still on his feet. Bulldogs his way to the 33. Aaron Hankel says, jump on my back. I'll carry you a couple yards. He sure will. He's shown that a few times tonight when he had the opportunity. Josh Hoffman given most of the playing time in terms of handoffs, but uh, Ankle comes up with a big gain there and pounds for yardage. The gear, this is the fullback, Mike Patton. Exclude those first two runs there in the fourth quarter by Shelby Pope. 
nice gainers, and they still have 283 yards rushing through three quarters. So they're well over 300 now. Passing, if my math's correct here, <laughs> 171 yards. That's 454 yards through three quarters. Shelby piling it up on offense. The give is to Hankel, and Hankel's going to be thrown for a loss. But he not will, without a fight. He will lose about three. And it looks like the Whippets have already tacked on about 26 yards back on. Third and seven. So does Ken Williams split out wide? Shag. Look, throws. Williams is open, and the ball goes through his hand. Flag on the play. penalty will move. The whip it back. Except for that penalty there, Shelby not really missing a beat with their second team backfield in there. They continue to pile up yardage here in the fourth quarter. Is Ken Williams and number 91 Brett Young wide to the right. Shag throws and this fires intended for Aaron Henkel. With an entire offseason plus all the young talent that uh, the Whippets have coming back next season, it'll be interesting if, if uh, head coach Tom Stacey can put any more wrinkles into this offense. He'll be hard pressed to. Ramey into punt. Flags complying, and I believe one of the linemen for Shelby switched. We talked about Coach Tom Stacy, offensive coordinator, assistant coach for about 10 years at Galleon, Lancaster, and Massillon. Been an assistant under Lee Owen quite a resume. We shouldn't be surprised by the offense we've seen and the execution, well, and uh, the schemes that he's come up with. Stepping into a football-rich town as Ramey kicks it away. Jesse has it at the 10, and that's about all he's going to get. When Shelby has had the punt tonight, Ron, Ramey doesn't get the big high soaring punts, but good yardage on his punts, and the coverage team doing a fine job there for the Whippets. First and 10 for Norwalk, 8.55 remaining, and still with the goose egg on their side of the scoreboard. Trail 35 to nothing. A handoff and a five yard pickup. Number 27, Luna. London, Luna. Well, there's a London, Luna, and a Paris. Luna. No comment for Mark Rogers. <laughs> the give is to Mark Meyer, and Meyer's going to be pulled down by number 85, Mark Fisher. More flags. The 
why it goes against the whippet. Mark Myers really done a nice job of tough, hard running, especially inside the tackles, also to the outside. He just hasn't had much room to run tonight. A 15-yard face mask penalty. Coach Tom Stacy still not happy. Still bending the official's ear. Shoot on the counter to Luna. That's what makes coaches like Coach Stacy so successful despite the score, no matter if it's 80 to nothing, no matter what the execution, he wants perfection and he desires that throughout the game from the opening kickoff until the final play. The man in the headset, defensive coach Gary Dvorak. Shoop on the roll, throws it, and it is incomplete. Intended for Mike Woodstra. Again, good coverage by the defense of Shelby. They've done an excellent job tonight after the first drive. Third and eight. Shoot. Throws downfield. The ball is incomplete. Intended for Luna. Shoot trying to thread the needle for Shelby defenders right in the area. Dangerous pass. When Shoop has tried to throw tonight. Not a fantastic rush by Shelby. Actually, just excellent coverage. And Paris Luna back to punt. Almost blocked. Ball will roll and be down at the 43. Shelby takes over. With 6.53 remaining in the ball game, they lead 35 to nothing. Shag gets it to Hankel, and Hankel's going to be dropped in the backfield. Loss of about three. The Shelby football program, although a proud one, has seen a bit of a drop-off in the last seven or eight years. 18 league titles, but with the talent we see tonight and the fine coaching, they may be headed towards some more success in the future. To give to Mike Patton. And he picks up no yardage. Ron Stepsis, the coach for so many years here at Shelby. And there you look at the X's and the O's. Uh, coach is trying to hide it. Didn't want us to get the game plan, I guess. <laughs> Stepsis has been here, here for, I believe, 20 some odd years. Now an assistant at Ashland University. Third and 11, Shag, play action, screen set up. Out to Henkel, Henkel with a block around front. He has the first down, down the sidelines, he goes. And brought down at the 24. Henkel, a 5'6". 140-pound sophomore. He runs more like 240 <laughs> with speed. He had a huge gainer last series for Shelby, and that run similar, churning all the way, breaking tackles. First and 10, Shag gives it to Hankel, and Hankel gets to the 20. 
hit once again at the line of scrimmage, able to muster around about three or four yards. A reminder, next week we will be in Ram country as the Madison Rams will take on the Ashland Arrows in the final game of the 1991 regular season in high school football. And if one of the North Central Ohio teams should happen to make it to the playoffs, TV 59 will follow them. We'll be there for all the action. If it's anything like last year, oh boy, you're in for a treat. Four minutes remaining. It is third and six for Shelby. Shag. We'll give it to Hankel, and Hankel popped in the backfield. Aaron didn't have a chance. Not that time. Three minutes and 35 seconds left in the game. Fourth down and eight. For the Whippets, they will go for it as their own at the Norwalk 23. So we look for the end zone here, Mark. Take a shot at it. Two wide receivers on the right side. That could be what uh, the Whippets are thinking there. Take another shot at it. But the Whippets will be backed up five delay of game. We've seen them in a few situations tonight where normally other teams would get conservative. At the end of a half, the first half, 20 to nothing for Shelby, and they were still going toward the end zone, still trying to move the ball, get more points on the board. Coach Stacy sending in the play. Fourth and 13. It is Larry Moore and Chuck Bowman. They give it to Patton, and Patton is stopped in the backfield. You get caught up with all the X's and O's and seeing the reverses and the razzle-dazzle. But one thing Coach Stacy did say that attributed to their success in the last couple weeks was they're blocking better. And it gets back to basics, blocking and tackling. And on offense, it all starts with that offensive line doing a job of blocking. And uh, that's something that they've worked on. First and ten for the truckers. Draw play. To Luna, and Luna goes nowhere. Down at the bottom of the pile for Shelby, number 59, Ryan Williams. Turning our attention toward Ashland University, your very astute in Ashland football. Ron, what do you think of the game tomorrow? Against Grand Valley, should be a very tough physical ball game. The Eagles have something to prove losing to them last year. To just be a, a dog fight to save the least. Shoop throws it out and overshoots Mark Meyer. Two tough home stands for the Eagles of Ashland University. Grand Valley State coming in and then the Butler Bulldogs. One thing's for sure, the Eagles will have to play better football than they have been the last few, few weeks. As a late flag comes just popping in, the referee signals penalty against Shelby. Brings up third and five. Shoot, throws downfield. The ball is caught. Nice catch by Hip. An on-rushing whippet 
right in the face of Stoop on that play. He did a fantastic job of delivering the pass despite the pressure right on target on the crossing pattern. Clock inside two minutes, one minute, 52 seconds. First and 10, eye backfield for Norwalk. Shoop, steps back, throws, tips, got it. And taken down at the 39. looking through the program and that was uh I believe Greg Hip that made that reception. He's checking it out, making sure. Second and five, one ten remaining. Shoot, drops back, throws, caught by Hip. First down for Norwalk. The first thing a lot of fans like to talk about when a team down 35 nothing like Norwalk is right now. Why didn't they do this in the first quarter, move the ball down the field? Shelby not probably focusing in right now, playing a little loose, just trying to uh, conserve time in, uh, in this football game. A lot of second stringers, and I believe the only first stringer is Trent Patrick. Shoot, under heavy rush, he'll throw deep downfield, and the ball is in and out of the hands of intended receiver, Doug Bores. Bores claiming a little interference on the play. Doesn't get the call. Forty ticks remaining in the ball game. Second and ten. Throws over the middle, ball is caught by Hip. At the 20 yard line, first and 10. Hip with a defender right on his heels, able to haul that pass in, showing fine hands and able to hold on to the football. Norwalk at the 20 yard line. Clock running, 25 seconds left. Shoot, on the roll, look, Hip there, and he hung on to the ball, nice catch by Greg Hip. And a timeout, called by Norwalk. 11 seconds left, we'll take a quick timeout, we come back for the final 11 seconds of tonight's ball game here at Shelby. The marching band. Ready to take on a little post-game festivities. Playing a little Born to be Wild there during our break and a little wild offense shown by Shelby tonight. 11 seconds left, second and five for Norwalk. They're at the 15-yard line. The closest they've been to scoring all day. Two throws from behind Greg Hupp. Clint Patrick on the coverage. Shoop really keying in on number 46, Hip, during this drive, and Hip has certainly shown fine concentration in hands that catch right before the break. Really attested to that. Seven seconds left. Shoop drops back. Rose, ball is intercepted. Mike Albert. Excuse me, Matt Albert, I'll get it right. With the interception, his second of the evening. And preserves the shutout for Coach Tom Stacy and also the defensive coach, Gary Dvorak. I know Coach Dvorak's probably over there sweating. And knowing that guy for many years, I know he's going, we gotta get the shutout, we gotta get the shutout. <laughs> now these coaches are all alike. And a big outburst by the Whippets tonight. Fantastic display on offense. The scheme drawn up by Coach Tom Stacy, but give them the credit. They executed it. Fine skilled players, youth coming back next season. The future looks bright for Shelby. That will do it here from Shelby. People would like to thank our camera people, Mr. Dean Stamfly.
Fry and, of course, Dave Russell down on the sideline. The man in the van, producer-director Asa Jesse, another fine job tonight. And, of course, Mark Rogers, my partner in crime. <laughs> this is Ron Rose saying your final score is Shelby, 35, Norwalk, nothing. We'll see you in Madison next week. Thank <laughs> you.